Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure for, for me to present uh, uh, Professor John Rosenkranz, that is a, a friend of Ragusa Schwa, as a friend also of, of Italy, and uh, he is the director of the nationally funded PhD program in occupational economics and safety at the Colorado State University. And this is one, uh, on the committee of the PhD school also of the University of Sassari in uh, agricultural science. Um, Peter is also, um, John is also associate director of the federally funded agricultural research center in Colorado, which is focused in enhancing safety, efficiency and productivity among agricultural enterprises. His expertise is uh, in the exposure assessment of risk factors associated with the occupational musculoskeletal disorders. And this is the theme of uh, his communication about uh, the quantification of trunk postures among, uh, between uh, uh, the fruit pickers, vegetable fruit pickers in Sardinia. John, you are welcome. Uh, please, for your presentation, but you can share your presentation. Grazie Danilo. Uh, the, the title of this presentation is Quantifying Stooped Trunk Postures Among Fruit and Vegetable Pickers in, uh, in Sardinia and Colorado. Uh, most of this work actually has been done by uh, Maria Caria uh, and Giuseppe uh, Tode from University of Sassari and my uh, doctoral student, Molly Hishke. Uh, so well, I work with, with two universities and uh, you know, primarily, that's why I'm in Sardinia so much of the time. Um, I uh, operate or I, we have a, what we call high cause, that's our High Plains Intermountain Center for Agricultural Health and Safety. And uh, that's where uh, on the umbrella that we have for doing all of our work in agriculture and forestry. I'm also part of the Mountain and Plains um, Education and Research Center. That's a federally funded center uh, for our PhD and master student programs in occupational ergonomics and safety. Also, uh, I do quite a bit of work uh, with Claudio Colosio uh, at the International Center for Rural Health and uh, the University, Università uh, delle Studio di Milano, uh, specifically with Federica Masci, and she's using the same type of instrumentation, in fact, my instrumentation, to do work in forestry workers as well as in hospital workers. Here we go. Uh, throughout the world, stooping, uh, this posture that you see in this photograph here is a common posture among workers uh, involved in fruit and vegetable production. And I'm sure all of you ha have seen this type of work before. Uh, the lifetime prevalence of low back disorders is about 90% for agricultural workers. And many of you know uh, one of my colleagues, Fadi Fatala at uh, University of California, Davis. He's done a lot of work in stooping postures. And this is one of his quotes that says, there is sufficient evidence supporting the notion that workers in stooped postures, it exposes, them, uh, exposes a large segment of agricultural workers in California to a high risk of developing low back disorders and there is a, a large need to address these risk factors. Uh, you can see how I define stooped working postures here. It's anything uh, where you're standing and bent over. And we see, of course, quite a bit of this in fruit and vegetable picking. Some of the primary risk factors are the high compressive loads at, uh, in the lumbar vertebra, as well as L5, S1 in, uh, segment there. Another problem is the long duration that these workers are in this particular posture. And a significant percentage of the work cycle involves this extreme position. So they may be down there for a long duration and come up for a very short time and go back down. These are all some pretty significant biomechanical risk factors for damage to the lumbar spine. Uh, the question then is uh, how can we measure these, uh, these exposures to these biomechanical stresses among agricultural workers. And there are a number of ways. We've done some pretty, we've used some pretty sophisticated instrumentation using IMUs to do motion analysis, but it's not, uh, it's not practical in 
uh, out in the field and, and real working situations. And so we're trying to find instrumentation that we can take in the field with us and measure a large number of workers. So this work that I'm gonna show you today, it involves the work that we did in Sardinia uh, with the fruit and vegetable growers. We use an instrumentation called the Zephyr Bioharness. And inside of this little unit, which is worn on the chest, is a triaxial accelerometer. There's a heart rate monitor that measures your EKG. There's a thermistor to measure uh, temperature as well as uh, uh, a strap that goes around. So we can also look at, at respiratory rates uh, among workers. So in this study, we had uh, about nine, eight or nine workers in each group picking melanzane as well as uh, fragole. Uh, this is an example of a melanzane uh, picker. Uh, this video is not going to work uh, on this presentation, but. What you would see in here is bending over to, to clip uh, with a pair of snips the, uh, the, the vegetable uh, one after another, and they have to look for them within these, uh, within these bushes also. Typically, they can hold about four melanzane in the hand before they have to come back up and put them in, in a bin. Whereas in, in strawberry pickers here, you can see this posture is maintained for at least a minute, sometimes two minutes, and, and then they, they come up and then they go back down. And so the duration of stooping in this po position is, is much longer. And I'll show you some of, some of those results. The, the, what we're interested in is the magnitude uh, of the position, that is how far do they bend down. We're interested in the frequency, that is how many times do they go down each hour or each minute? Uh, and we, we measure it uh, per hour. And then also the duration. And we look at the duration. We can measure the duration in these three posture categories from zero uh, to, uh, to a hyperextension or extension of the trunk. We also measure between zero and 30, 30 and 60, and then below 60. So as you can imagine, uh, the further you bend down, the greater the force is on the, on the lumbar spine. And so it's these postures in this area in the red zone uh, beyond 60 degrees that we're most concerned about. Um, these are some of the summary results from both the uh, melanzane and the fragole uh, picking. The total time we sampled was about 100 minutes for each group. The frequency uh, for the melanzane pickers was 132 cycles per hour. That is the amount of time they, they stooped over, stayed in that position, before they came back. Uh, whereas with the Fregole picking, uh, they were 72 cycles per hour. That's because they were down uh, a longer period of time. You can see the average cycle time, that is the time going down and coming back was 26 seconds for the Melanzani pickers and uh, almost twice that amount of time for the strawberry pickers. So they were down uh, more than half that time. The average maximum flexion of the trunk per cycle was about 82 degrees for the melanzane workers and a bit more, 93 degrees for the fregole workers. So you can see uh, there are some, some differences here, especially in the frequency, as well as in the average cycle time. And this is because it's 48 seconds is because they're down on average 48 seconds before they come back into an upright posture. So really what I, well, I can see, you can show it here. So um, these are the different posture categories, uh, one, two, three, and four. Number four being the worst uh, position that is 60 degrees and, and greater. And what we see here in the red bar, these are the fragole pickers or the strawberry pickers. And they spend about half of their cycle time in that bent over or that stooped position. Whereas the Melanzani workers, they spend about 25% bent over um, in that amount of trunk flexion. And so we're really concerned uh, 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 about this, this risk right here, because we know that in that position, the, uh, the forces in the lumbar spine are much greater than let's say in an upright position. And we're also concerned about the duration that they're imposing that stress not just the cumulative duration over the entire workday, we're concerned about that, 
but we're concerned about the time they're stooped over without coming up for a short break. So we found significant differences in the frequency, the duration and the magnitude of the posture exposures between these two uh, products that were being harvested. And we're mostly concerned about the magnitude that is the, the degrees, uh, 60 degrees and greater, and the duration of that stooping posture. And so there are ways to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I think in the future, the answer here um, is what we're going, what we're seeing now in California, we see uh, robotics picking strawberries. We also see um, Melanzani, for exa example, grown much higher uh, so that workers are not stooped over and they're picking actually from waist to, to shoulder level uh, and they don't have to stoop. But I think for workers uh, in, in small productions and in areas like maybe Sardinia where we're doing a lot of work, I think what we could do actually before they get robotics or machinery that makes it different, um, I think that we can alter the, uh, the duration um, if we implement um, periods where we're stooping for a shorter amount of time and coming up sooner to an upright position. Because uh, e even though you're still stooped for a long period of time, it will give them some break and to some degree re-nourish that disc uh, from all the pressure um, if they come up for a short period of time. Um, what we're doing next, though, is we're, we're going to do a larger study. We're going to collect more work history and back pain prevalence demographics. We're going to uh, get 100 workers, five different products, and we're going to do most of this, at least um, uh, in, in Colorado, uh, although we may do some more in Sardinia. We'll have to see uh, if we can get out into the fields. And then we're going to compare these posture metrics um, by not just produce, but also look at the associations of work history, current pain or prevalence, uh, um, uh, pain in the past in the back, as well as some demographics. Uh, this is a short video that I can't show you because video is not running right now. But again, um, you know, the answers are increasing the height of the product so they're not in these stooped postures. And there are many, uh, I've seen Melanzani growing in the US where they're grown at, uh, two to three meters. And then you know, they're up on, on platforms picking and adjusting that platform to the height of the fruit so that they don't have to bend over. Strawberries, you can look on videos. Some of the largest producers in California are using um, robots to start picking strawberries. And, um, and one of the big issues we have here in the US is trying to find labor uh, for agriculture with our um, are really poor immigration policies. Uh, we're unable to find enough workers, especially now during the pandemic, uh, to be picking in the fields. And so farms, large farms, don't want to rely on workers and trying to find workers, and they're investing money into more and more robotics now. Uh, with that, I'll stop sharing and I'll say thank you for your attention. Okay, John, nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, uh, now I leave the, the word to John Paul the TCA for the following of the of the program, uh, because our program now provides uh, we must uh, have uh, uh, contemporary rooms, okay? Yes, there is the, the one room uh, and the room number two with the different topics. Now uh, I leave the, the word also to the to the attendance for a question to Professor uh, Rosenkrantz. Please jump. Um, I have a question, and uh, I place it in the, in the question in the chat. But I'm going to to read it, and it's about uh, robotics. You mentioned robotics in in your um, presentation, uh, John. But uh, can we expect important help from robotics in the next future, or will main agricultural job continue to be carried out by operators in the disadvantaged postures? Well, certainly we will have robotics in the future, and the reason is is because they're more reliable than humans, and uh, and this is this is where we're moving. And but in the meantime, I mean, it'll be many years before we get robotics uh, throughout the world. 
and maybe never in some parts of the world. So I think we still are going to be picking by hand and we'll still see these postures. But John Paulo, I, I really do think that we can, we can modify uh, the work in a couple of ways. One, if we could change the height, even raise it slightly, um, that's not unreasonable. And the other, as I said, is looking at what I call that sort of work rest cycle. And that is stand up more often, you know, in an erect position. Um, I mean, all of us, you know, many of us do work uh, around the house, around the yard. And, and we know if we're bent over, even working on an automobile, if we're bent over for several minutes at a time, you know, it can really cause our, our backs to hurt. So I think that uh, it will help to, to, to see if we can modify those work rest cycles. Great. Thank you, John, for your, uh, for your answers. The, the question, the robotics, uh, very, very important topic as concerns the musculoskeletal uh, disease, I think. Okay, there is an, another, another question, uh, the colleague Pessina. Yes, very simple. Thank you very much, John, for your very interesting presentation. Following the John Paolo's question, can we expect differences in developing of robots to be used in greenhouses? or in open field? Uh, I see them in open field and in, in greenhouses, large greenhouses where they have to raise uh, you know, the height of it, of course. Thank you. Okay, there is also the last question by Alessio Cappelli of uh, Florence University. Uh, thanks for the nice work, say Alessio. And uh, he has a question with respect to the backbone protection. Do you think, uh, John, that the specific PPE might be develop, uh, developed, like uh, in motorcycle racing, for example, for this kind of workers to avoid uh, disorders to the back? Yes, I, I see the question in, in, the, in the chat. Thank you, uh, Alessio. Um, uh, I assume you're referring to what, what I would call a back belt uh, to support the back. Uh, I mean, at least the research in the United States have, have shown those you know, not to be uh, protective enough. In fact, uh, it, it's probably better to modify the work than to just give them PPE, um, especially these back belts, which just have, have not been shown to be protective. I think they do remind the worker, you know, to watch their back, but um, uh, th there may be other methods. I know in the U.S. they're using a, a lot of uh, assistive devices that they attach to workers so that if they're bending over, you know, that they have um, a spring mechanism or shock mechanism to prevent, you know, that takes some of that load off of the back. Uh, and they're working with those in, in a number of industries, especially the automobile industry. So something like that um, may be possible. Thank you. Well, okay, if uh, there are other questions for John, now we have uh, two rooms uh, with uh, two chairs that, that are Professor Pessina and Professor Eugenio Cavallo in, uh, in the link you see in the chat, uh, Massimo Cecchini has put the link uh, to the room one and uh, to the room two. Uh, in the, the room one, there are uh, the session topic I, uh, one to eight. And in the second one, the, the room two uh, from nine to uh, 17. Okay, now we can link the other rooms. Thank you for your participation. Okay, Laura, I'm going to start, dear colleagues. And uh, dear colleagues, but also dear friends, I hope. Um, the sixth edition of Ragusa SHWA, the international conference entirely devoted to the themes of safety, health, and welfare in agriculture and agrofood systems, is going to conclude, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, this uh, 2021 uh, conference hosted uh, about 40 posters and around 200 of authors. 
the posters are available in the website and many authors have already declared their willingness to answer via email. Questions and answers will be published on the website and or social. So by this, we can say that the 2021 conference will continue in the future. And speaking about the future, authors are warmly invited to send the final version of the paper within 6th October, with the aim to make it easier for us to be on time uh, in order to prepare the indexed Scopus volume edited by Springer, as you know very well, I think. This sixth uh, edition of uh, our conference hosts many innovations. We can recognize one of them in the Lectio Magistralis uh, on urban nature as a paradigm of human health, a topic that uh, Ragusa SHWA already connected in the course of the um, uh, 2022 edition. And we hope so, to develop uh, this uh, kind of thematic with um, uh, devoting an uh, a, a entire section, ses session the next edition of the conference. Moreover, very important was to host the special session, Innovation for Smart Dairy Farming. Topics on uh, smart agriculture and on animal welfare have always been close to Ragusa SHWA, and therefore we sincerely hope to host a session in the next edition of the conference. All the Lectio Magistralis on the main communication, but also the presentations, including that the ones coming from the illustrious Academia of the uh, Antigiamo Italiano, Academia dei Georgofili, and all the posters. Let us to declare that uh, this conference uh, this edition of the, our conference have once again achieved the three main objectives that we have, that the conference has, which are updating, contamination, and encouragement to the formation of new interdisciplinary research groups, as in the past happened. Before concluding, let me, on behalf of the organizing committee, give a warm thanks to all the authors, all the presenters, all the audience, and moreover, a special mention for Professoressa Sabina Faidla for her great job as scientific sec secretariat, and also a special mention uh, to uh, Professor Massimo Cecchini, un applauso per favore in diretta, uh, for great job concerning uh, uh, broadcasting. Besides, I think, uh, as, uh, referring to Professoressa Sabina, working with me is not always to see Sabina, I know perfectly, I know perfectly. In conclusion, of the sixth international conference Ragusa SHWA, all the organizing committee give you the appointment for the next edition, which we hope will be in attendance in September 2023, or not in September, but on 2023, in the beautiful late Baroque city of Ragusa Ibla in South Eastern Sicily. Save the date, and keep in touch and see you as soon as possible.